Creators, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia, and today we are gonna do a Q&A video. I haven't done one of these for a while, so I thought it would be fun. So I have gone through my comments. I love reading all of your comments, and I respond to as many as I can, but I went through and found a few that I thought might be interesting to a number of you if I gave an answer. So I've got my laptop here, and we are ready to go. So this question is from Mint Mikasa. They ask, any difference between crossing over the top of the foot versus in front of the foot? My coach was teaching us to lift over, but I find crossing in front is easier. So this is in regards to my backward crossovers tutorial. And they are wondering about the difference between lifting over as you cross versus sliding in front as you cross. This is an interesting question. They're, both techniques are correct, but they're usually used at different times in your skating journey. So when you start learning crossovers, going backwards, you usually will lift over. Now, this does feel a little cumbersome, but it helps you uh, achieve control over each edge. So by lifting over, you have to be able to control your back outside edge on the foot that's on the inside of the circle, and then your back inside edge on the foot that's on the outside of the circle. So by lifting, you're not gonna be as uh, loose in your core, in your upper body. You have to be more careful with your balance, with your stability as you lift across. So think about learning the lifted backward crossover as a skills exercise. And then once you can do that successfully, you're not dragging your toe picks, you're not falling from one foot to the other, then we can use all of that uh, core strength, balance strength, stability that you have worked on and move it to a crossover that slides in front. So we progress from a lifted to a sliding once we know that you have control over your skates on those backward crossovers. So if your coach is asking you to lift, do what they're asking because there's a reason for it. But just know once they see what they need to see with those crossovers, you'll be able to slide in front in no time. This question is from Letty Me 3099 They say, I've been skating for six to nine months. I'm using leather skates, but they pinch my toes. My coach told me that I have the right length for sizing, but not wide enough. Well, I guess it's more of a statement, not a question, but I feel like there's a question buried in there. So they're saying that their skates are the right length, but not the right width. This happens all the time. Um, once you start getting into skating and realizing more what you need in a skate, you'll be more careful with ordering extra wide or extra narrow or even customizing boots. Some manufacturers will do a semi-custom boot for you or you can go the way I've gone with Harlick where it's a completely custom-made boot for the size and shape and all the oddities of my feet. But until then, if you have a skate that is too narrow, say you have your toes and then it's too narrow across the ball of the foot is, most pro shops can stretch the toes of your skates. So th there's a number of different ways they can do this. They can either use a machine that punches out the edges, so it's like a customized, like makes a little indentation on the side, or you can put it on a machine that will stretch the whole front or stretch the heel. So you can get some customization in your skates that will make it more comfortable. I do have a video about all the different ways you can customize your skates, so I will post a link to that down in the description below this video. This is from Anna Murphy 4993, and she was commenting on the video I did this summer where we talked about all the different tips from different coaches about having a successful session. And I'll post a link down in the description below so you can watch that video if you'd like. Anna happens to have children who skate at Skate Town where I work. She says, I love all these great tips. We are so lucky to have so many great coaches at Skate Town. I love Coach Jennifer's demonstration with the rubber band and Coach Luisa's list to plan ahead. Coach Devin, I have a couple of skaters that really need to hear your message about using their ice time wisely. Thank you for all the great advice. Follow-up question. What can parents do to help their skaters have the most useful sessions? This is a great follow-up question because as a parent, especially with younger children, you can help set the tone for what your kids expect out on the ice. And so if your child is younger, you can really help them think about planning ahead 
You can even help them make a list of what they're gonna work on. And you can help them learn how to divide up their ice time. So if your child has an hour then, and you somewhat know what they're working on, you can kind of quiz them. What are you gonna do for your warm up as you're driving them to the rink or getting ready in the morning or whatnot? What are you gonna do for a warm up at the rink today? Or what jumps do you need to work on today? Or what spins do you need to work on? Or did your coach have you working on a test? So you can have a conversation with them that gets them thinking. But beyond that, you can also help make them a checklist. So you can, I know um, I've done this before where I've done it for my students, but parents can definitely help this. You can make them a little laminated uh, checklist so that they can go through and do their warm up and work on and you can list what jumps they should work on and what spins now this is might be something you want to get some feedback you know you can chat with your coach and figure out with them um, what skills your skater is currently working on and put those into a little checklist so your skater can check them off as they go through in their practice session. At the end of the day, you can just wipe it off if it's laminated and do it again the next day. And those can be updated as their skills progress. So something like that might be helpful as a parent to help support your child. You can also help remind them to have a good stretching routine. Um, some parents will even help their kids with a stretch routine in the, uh, before they skate or get them there in time for a little bit of an off ice warm up. So you wanna make sure that you're encouraging your kids to be stretched and warmed up ahead of time. And that means getting to the rink a little early. And also afterwards, so I love have, having my students write in like a notebook. So after a session, you can make sure that they spend a little bit of time writing in their notebook about what they practiced that day or things that their coach told them that they had to practice. So it's just taking those uh, things that as a skater gets older that they will know to do themselves and as a parent helping them remember to do those warming up stretching out making a list so you're organized on the ice practicing all the things on that list and then afterwards taking notes so that um, you're being mindful and thinking about what to work on next time so those are all things that you can do as a parent to help your younger skaters uh, have a more successful session this next question is from Casey and Nerva she asks, where should my eyes be or what should I be looking at during forward crossovers? This is a great question. I have so many students who have a habit of looking down on the ice while they're skating and it's just such a challenge to help them get their eyes up. And I sort of have a rule that you shouldn't be looking below the blue line. Different rinks have different colored walls, but ours, the top of the wall has a blue plastic cap. So I tell them, don't look below the blue line because then you're looking out, right? And this is especially important if you ever do shows or competitions, you don't wanna be in the habit of looking down at your feet. Otherwise, we're just watching the top of your head and that's not very interesting. We wanna see your face, right? So during crossovers, what I would suggest is to, if you can't get yourself to look completely out, right out at that blue line, then what you wanna do is track the ice out in front of you. So you don't wanna look right down at the ice where you're skating. You should know that that ice is clear, right? You don't need to look right down at the ice. What you wanna do is look out, kind of like if you're driving, you look out and you wanna see what's going on on the road around you, but you're not looking at the ground right in front of your wheels. You've already seen that when you were looking out, right? So while you're skating, you always wanna be looking out in front of you you can look at the ice as long as it's way out there so you can track your circle if you're on a circle you want to be looking out forward at that circle not right down at the ground okay you also always want to be keeping your eyes up and off the ground right in front of you so you can see if there are other skaters coming and you're not going to be running into people so always my rule of thumb is don't let your eyes go below the barrier but if you need to look at the ice make sure it's like 12 feet out in front of you so that you can see also what's going on with other skaters on the ice around you. This next question is from Claire Bear Russian, 2D star, something like that. And they say, hi, I love your videos. Thank you. Quick question about the diving board line exercise. Can it be used for the toe loop? 
My coach mentioned that I have too curvy an entrance and I was wondering if that exercise would help. So what this refers to is in my flip jump tutorial, I talk about doing that flip jump on a line or as I call like a diving board or you can think of it like a gymnastics balance beam. And I use one of the thick lines that divides up the rink for hockey, right? Um, and I do this to help you keep from having a really uh, curvy, flippy entrance to your flip jump because that creates a really wild jump and you often have way too much pre-rotation in your flip if you do it that way. Um, if it's really your if your flip is really curved you tend to topic and give a really strong pivot before you take off and as we talked about earlier we don't want a heavy pre-rotation we want just a teensy teensy rotation on the ice so that diving board exercise you can check out down below i will post a link to my flip tutorial as well as my toe loop tutorial but um yes you can use the diving board exercise for your toe loops it's very similar, but you need a little bit more of a pivot with your toe loop, so it's not an exact, it doesn't correlate exactly, but if you practice it on the line, it does help straighten out your toe loop. Let's head to the rink really quick and I'll show you what that looks like. So here you can see me going a little bit in slow motion doing a flip jump. I'm attempting to keep everything on the blue line. The three turn, the tap, the jump, and the landing. This helps me keep it controlled and not whipped. So here I'm gonna do the same thing doing a toe loop. The nature of a toe loop is a little different though. You're gonna need a little bit more curve. You can see that my three turn is gonna move away from that blue line, and then I'm gonna tap on the blue line. I'll rotate around and then land on that blue line as well. So you can use it somewhat the same way, but just keep in mind, you'll have to move off it a little bit to get that pivot entry. This question is from Amy Lee Suits. She asks, do some skaters bend their skating leg in upright spins, forward or backward spins? I never know whether to completely straighten or have a slight bend. I've heard different things. This is a great question. You want your skating leg, so the, the leg you're spinning on, to at least appear straight, perfectly straight and lifted. I have a student who has hyperextension, so we have to be a little bit careful with that, making sure she's not hyperextending her knee, but you want that leg to be straight and lifted. You wanna feel your quads pulling, but at the same time, you wanna feel your foot pushing. So you have a motion where your foot, the ball of your foot, right, where the rocker is, is pushing down, and the rest of your leg is pushing up. So you have like this push-pull feeling. And that is gonna help you engage all of the muscles in your leg and help you have pressure into the ice while you're spinning. You want, if, if you bend your knee, you tend to not be able to put the correct pressure into your edge, and so you're not gonna achieve the same stability or speed in your spin. If your leg straightens, then you can push down with your foot and pull up with your body, and you create pressure into that ice that stabilizes you, it gives you more speed and control, and it looks better. So that's my answer. In any upright spin, you want your skating leg straight. So yes, please work on straightening your knee in your one foot spins. All right, skaters, I think that's about as much time as I have today. I hope you found these question and answers helpful. If you have questions that you would love for me to answer, make sure you leave those in the comments down below. I answer as many of them as I can, and if I think it's something that will apply to a lot of skaters, I might just pull it into a Q&A like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please do give us that thumbs up, and if you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.